Okay, so this video is gonna be global resource consumption and security for IB geography and the part of the syllabus is measuring trends in resource consumption including individual, national and global ecological footprints. So let's go over key definitions firstly. So biocapacity is the capacity of an area to provide resources and absorb waste. An ecological creditor is a country with an ecological footprint lower than their biocapacity. So um Okay, well, let me move on. Okay, I'm just going to explain it later. Ecological debtor is a country with an ecological footprint higher than their biocapacity. Global hectare is a biologically productive hectare with world average biological productivity for a given year. Finally, ecological footprint, very important, is the area of land and water required to support a given population at a particular standard of living takes into account the area of land and, re and water required to provide all the resources needed by the population and assimilate the waste also. So this is literally biocapacity. So very, these all link. So this is measured with this and these are used to kind of indicate this. Like, not indicate, but like classify countries on, in terms of where they stand in terms of the ecological footprint. And how much they're producing and how that's impacting the environment okay so the ecological footprint as a measurement how is it calculated similar to a bank account it tells us how much land and water and area we need to produce the resources we use and also absorb our waste why might it be useful it allows individuals business cities countries and even the world to know how much resource use is necessary and sustainable it can be used to measure ecological credit and debt it keeps track some limitations might be it may oversimplify the impacts of resources on the environment. Data availability can be poor. Certain groups may not be taken into account, um, like rural areas, for example. Imports for raw materials may not be accounted for. And there's no indication of well-being or economic, political and social, cultural factors that could be involved in like why the measurement is like that or anything like that. Okay, so let's look at the trends of individual, national, and global footprint. So individual. High income countries make disproportionate disproportionate demands. So this shows that high income countries have overall very large ecological footprint, like very large. You know, it's like four point two and then goes up to like six, ranges between four six and five kind of but it's still very high overall. Mm, I think this is probably global, but I'm kind of not sure. But okay, middle income, it has increased, yes, but very much lower than, like, this is way lower than this. And low income, kind of flat, um, you know, not very much high growth, low growth. It's just relatively even, but it does fluctuate, um, but it kind of looks like it's declining. I don't know, that looks a bit like it's increasing, but I'm not sure. I, I feel like my eyes can't tell. It looks kind of like it's declining here, but I don't know if that's just because of this line. But just know that high income countries, people there tend to, on average, have high demands. But that may not be accurate because in high income countries, there are areas or consumers that are actually more aware or consumers that aren't actually using as much like people in Kind of in lower income groups within a high income country like maybe they're not using as much um and maybe this takes into account okay well it's per person so it depends if this might take into account corporations or you know businesses it just kind of depends so just be aware of that when you're looking at graphs that it's maybe not accurate okay now we're going to look at like the specific uses like by component so overall, the largest component is carbon, and then cropland, and then forest, and then grazing, and then fishing, and then built up land. But overall, they've all increased from 1961 to 2008. I don't know what it looks like now, um, but you know, this is the general trend that the ecological footprint has increased for all of these industries over the over these years. Okay, now we'll look at national. So top 10 countries with the biggest ecological footprint per person. Again, these might not be 100% accurate. I'm not sure what year this is. And also, it depends on how it's measured because you don't really know. But okay, let's just consider it. So, Qatar, Kuwait, UAE, Denmark, USA, Belgium, Australia, Canada, Netherlands, Ireland. These countries might be because of their oil industries, energy industries. I'm not entirely sure. 
also per person it's going to be larger if the population is like relatively smaller um like china and india i would expect to be like lower because of their huge populations dividing their ecological foot uh, ecological footprint in total top 10 african countries mauritius mauritius mauritania i feel like i don't know how to say that Botswana, South Africa, Egypt, Namibia, Tunisia, Chad, Mali, Gabon. Um, so just a good idea of what countries have a large ecological footprint. Also, another thing is a lot of these countries with the highest ones are quite developed. So that links along with this high income country graph. Okay, national again, ecological footprint by country. Above nine, Mongolia, parts of the Middle East. 7 to 9 and 5 to 7 is like North America, Australia, Russia, parts of Europe, Middle East. So again, like this matches this quite fairly. And then kind of lower, 1 to 3, below 1. Okay, well, let's go with middle first. Middle 3 to 5 is like South America, China, parts of Northern Africa, Western Asia, Europe, a lot of Europe. Then the lowest is kind of kind of northern South America, Mexico, a lot of um, Africa. Central Africa is very low here, and here also. And here it's relatively low. Okay, now we're gonna go again. Okay, ecological footprint by source. So this is like different countries and how much different industries are using energy. So Carbon is highest in all the countries, then cropland, then grazing, then... Well, okay, then it kind of gets more split up. Okay, so... Just be aware of this, like, these different proportions. As you can see, these are a lot of high-income countries with loads of carbon percentages of their total global hectares, which we did define earlier here. Um, <laughs> and then... Actually, in kind of these i'd say developing ish kind of more develop developing ish countries like these are two BRICS countries um i have more kind of cropland than these countries do and that might be because of their sectors of industry also they kind of tend to have more grazing land again because of maybe their different sectors of industry brazil has a large proportion of fishing ground um and forest land is large in indonesia maybe because of palm oil production um, and then the rest it's like relatively small and then we have um built up land kind of relatively small throughout so just a nice summary of some countries and their global hectare use of, and their ecological footprint by source okay finally we're going to look at global ecological footprints so this is the globe the world it okay so from from 1970 it's gone into an ecological deficit so it's become an ecological debtor this this definition so it's quite bad this is bad um because it used to be ecological reserve so you know they were you they weren't overusing resources weren't weren't exploiting weren't you know using more than they could supply but then from here on they are and it that has seemed to increase which is very dangerous for the climate and just the world's resources in general um yeah okay so yeah okay so the red line is ecological footprint which has increased huge in huge amounts and i don't know what it would look like now but i'm guessing it has still increased um biocapacity is kind of stable but slightly increasing um yeah 